Hello everyone. Um, there's no one online at the moment, just started this off. But this is a combination of a tutorial and also looking at the current situation. So um, <clears throat> bear with me while I wait for a few people to come online. But this is to help people out. And uh, hello, ITTG. I'm very well, thank you. And um, yeah, I, I didn't realize I was running late. So I thought I'd better come online <clears throat> and start helping people out, give them some lessons, and uh, hopefully you benefit. And this is a, a, num a series that I'm going to start off with uh, helping people out there who are new to the environment, new to charts. And my hope is that you will pick up some fundamentals and then it's up to you what you do from that point onwards. So uh, hopefully this video will be beneficial to a lot of people and they'll uh, give you some groundwork to do or give you a, a list of things to do. And uh, so let's start from there. What I'll do is uh, I'll go to my website and there's a, I have a list there. And my website has a list of things that you should know about. So what I'll do is, <coughs> this list is what you should know on the screen. You need to know this list very well. Thank you. You need to know this list well. These are all the terms, uh, I suppose, not all of it, I suppose exchanges and basic wallet, basics of wallets. Those additional stuff that you should learn, separate to just the charts. Obviously, that's all about crypto. But uh, the main one from one to five is what you should know. Candlesticks, support and resistance levels, trends, moving averages, Fibonacci's, and there's one more there actually, indicators. So I've, I'll need to add that on as well, number six. So that, you know, this is work in progress. I've got a lot of things to do. And um, if you know those fundamentals, there's a lot of information on those items on YouTube. I haven't got around to doing all that. And uh, if I do a good job on this recording, I'll start adding it to my list. Okay. So um, I suppose some people are interested in more about making money at the moment. That's fine. That's, that's a separate video and the strategies. So um, let me also go to YouTube and I'll add that on as well, the link, because people need to either opt for one or the other. Some people have issues with um, trading view. So I'll, I'll go to my YouTube channel, get the link, and add it to this uh, post. To this uh, post. To okay, you can see I'm at that point there. So where am I? Go back one. Just bear with me for a sec, a minute or two. I'm just going to open this somewhere. Right there I am. I'm going to add this to the description. Um, actually, probably can't do it, but I'll try. Well, let me save it. No, it doesn't. I'm, I've got, with training view in the description, I only got 255 characters. So what I'll do is I'll add it to the chat line for YouTube. And uh, you can look there as well if you need to. Okay, let's begin. <clears throat> let's go to Bitcoin. And uh, where am I? Bitcoin, Bitcoin. So you can see, and I haven't moved my lines at all at the moment. My four hour trend line what I said, lying in the sand from yesterday's post, I believe. You can see how it's acting as a resistance. I haven't touched this since yesterday. And so we we expected a resistance level here, which is roughly 54,400. So no surprise to me that we would have had a, a pullback, a little bit of a pullback, still bullish. It's actually turned out to be more bullish than I expected. You know, and 
on the four hour chart, you can see these candlesticks. So <coughs> as part of this episode, uh, session, I will cover candlesticks, not into too much detail, but you need to understand what basic candlesticks are and what they do or what they represent. And uh, I will start, I'm just going to look at this chart at the moment. And uh, so each candlestick represents four hours of activity. And what we have here is a nice bullish candle followed up, followed up so far with a, a slightly bearish candle. And that is on the 24 hour. So we've got 24 minutes for this candle to finish. If it finishes that way, we're going to move down a bit more. We're going to come down a bit more or more likely to come down a bit more. The reason being is when you look at candlesticks, the combination tells you a story. A candlestick on its own doesn't do the job. It doesn't help. You can't take one candlestick of a lot of uh, to represent a, a story. You need a, at least three. And in this case, we need the third candle to finish. And then we'll understand what the story is. At the moment, it looks like it. We will pull back down to this fib level, which is about 51,000, 52,000. No. Where is it? Uh, I'm, I'm thinking this black line is one level to this fib level. So if it's going to pull back, based on this setup, this area could be where it could pull back to. And my expectation, that will be support and then back up. So if, it's going to, if this candle closes bearish, we'll come back down here and then we'll go back up. That's my expectation because we're all already broken out of a big structure. The retest is here, this black line, which was a key level and the fib level is another key level. So Bitcoin might likely pull back a bit. This tells me that there is a bit of downward pressure because you can see how this has come down nearly to 50%. So we have on the four hour a slight, it might just go like that and then back up again. So not to panic, still bullish. Meanwhile, the alt will do better. And for those who are interested in learning how to trade and looking for strategies, I just made a post. And uh, this post here, I'll just bring it across. Tells you in detail um, all the trading opportunities in there. I'm not going to educate you on this. This is for you to pick up. So if you click on the link, it tells you all the opportunities and the strategies, and you will need to look them up on the internet or do a course with me, and I can teach you all that. Um, but what I thought is this is there's logic to all this. Price action is not just random. It is random moving, but there is a strategy for every position. And when I look at this chart, you can make a lot of money if you know what you're doing. And uh, it's just about concentration. So this is fully av freely available to you. And if you look at these stru stru the structural strategies and there's moving average strategies and that's Fibonacci level strategies. There is a whole bunch of strategies there. I'll count at least four there. And um, and it's your job to do your homework and find out what that is or attend the course with me either way. And I'll leave it at that. I, I do teach all this and I will continue to do that. Those who approach me. Okay. Um, so I'll close that. But that, that is just recently posted. And if I look at it, I didn't get one like yet. <laughs> That's all cool. Okay, here we go. Let's move on to the other chart of Bitcoin. Here we go. The black one. There we go. So I have two charts on Bitcoin. And this is the one I do video updates with. And you can see the yellow band is still the area, as I said before, on the video or video post that I did on Bitcoin yesterday, that this yellow band will be an area of significant resistance. 
as because we had this structural here. So <clears throat> that is for the Bitcoin now. I'm still looking for Bitcoin to hit the 0.5 Fibonacci as per the video post. And so far as pullback. And actually, I should go into the four hour, shouldn't I? Four hour will help a bit better. You can see that yesterday's where I left off yesterday was a 0.5 Fibonacci level to the 0.618, which is the, the yellow band. So I don't see um, price passing that. And if it does, great. That is going to be very bullish. If point, price hits the 0.786 Fibonacci and then pulls it back, that is extremely bullish. And uh, and I'm not, I'm not to say I'm not bullish, but I still believe we will come down to this level once we hit there. It's ever going to be, actually, sorry, correction. There is a good possibility that we will not come down here anymore. And this is our level here now. This is our new level, potentially. If it does come down, this is our new level. So it, it's very likely possible, even actually, I'll give it a 60% chance the price won't, price will just come down to here, not to the 40k. But there is still a chance that it can, just like this one did here, the dump and the big bounce and another dump. And, and you can see over here that we did like that was the bottom, and then we came slightly a bit lower and a bit lower. So it's still possible that we can do that, depending where this reaches. Okay, if it, if it stays here, then I do believe, if price doesn't come higher, then I believe that we can come down potentially lower, but this is definitely a new level to um, look for opportunity to enter. So I would enter here now, not here. I will enter here if it comes, but what I'll do is I'll, I'll spread my um, entries. So that's for Bitcoin for the time being. Now let's start with, um, with the candlesticks. So some of you don't, no one, yeah, no one really does a good job in explaining things, I think, on the internet on what the candlesticks are. And, um, Let's, so if, if you're not interested in this session, you can, you can always leave and look at it later when you've got time. But this is about, um, it's a tutorial. So the, the rest of it is all tutorial. I'm not going to cover Bitcoin anymore. I already just did that. And the rest is about understanding the, the price uh, candlesticks and levels of resistance and support. So here's a good area. So this is a weekly chart. Each candlestick, I'm going to try to articulate this so you can understand better what candlestick is. Each candlestick represents price action in a certain time frame. So I'm on the weekly, and if I look at on, on the weekly chart, <coughs> I can see that in one week, and I'll pick one just by random, I'll pick this top one here. Okay, and I'll explain what it's telling us. This red candlestick is telling us as price came up, that week, the previous week stopped here, right there. Right? So Sunday, end of Sunday, that was the end of the candlestick. And the story finishes there. And after so Monday, when Sunday finished, Monday, this is where the candlestick started. The price was that was its new price entry. And through the course of the week, this candlestick went all the way down there in the course of the week. By the end of Sunday, the, the price stopped there. Does that make sense? So the, pre, the, the start of the week, price, the candlestick started here. By the end of the week, the candlestick or the pr, um, price stopped here. So that's why we got the body of the candle. And the week is what happened during the week. So price came all the way down here and then went back up during the course of the week. And if you look on the daily, you'll know what that, what that, which day did what. But in that week, 
price dropped, ranged, and ended up end of the week to this level. So now, if you look at that, you can see that price dropped end of the week, it's closed below the previous week. So on average, we are below the previous week. That is a bearish sign. That is significantly bearish. And the fact that it came all the way down here is a good clue. Yeah, so during the course of the week, price came all the way down here. There was a whole bunch of buyers, price went up. Now, that tells you a story that we are in a bearish mode. So we already change, it's a, it's a changing trend. We got a lower low. So this low is now lower. So we have a changing trend. This is significant level here as well. So each candlestick, the body of the candlestick is where a reference point. So when you, so I'm talking about candlesticks here at the moment, but while we're doing that, now I'm going to plot my support lines and resistance lines. So what you should do, whenever you approach a chart, this is my method, start looking at the weekly. Put your line. Put your line there, like I'm doing right now. Use the body of the candle. Yeah, put your line there and label it. Weekly support. Or weekly resistance. Okay. Now you're going to see how that works down the track. So I'm going to put that white and my other weekly support and resistance is here, right at the body of the candle. So here and here. As price came up, these were support levels. And Obviously, this is our resistance, correct? So if I draw a line there, so you need to just put it there. And I'm gonna to get to why you're gonna just put it there. So resistance. <clears throat> now you have some understanding on price on where the support is in the week and where there's resistance in the week. Here we have another one on the way down, but we won't get there now. We're just gonna, we're gonna focus on this left side of the, the screen. So we, we're just gonna focus on this left side, this level. The right side, we're not gonna focus on because I'm gonna explain to you later on why these levels affect the future price. Here we have another weekly, clear, clear resistance and support. So that's a resistance level significantly. And you can see here, that is support. Yeah, on the weekly. Weekly support. I'm going to go wide. And I'll just do the same up there as well. And you can see that during that bull run, price did pull back. And you can see where price pulled back to this moving average. Okay, so there was a moving average that price kept on touching. This moving average is in this case, let's see what it is. Okay, let me put another one so I make it easier. That's the 10 weekly moving average. And that's a 20 weekly moving average. So we'll get rid of that 10. So the, this white line, and I'm going to talk about moving averages, this white line calculates, is calculated by the chart. So if it's on the 20 moving average, what it does is it counts 20 candles back and puts an average of those 20 candles and puts a line. And the next line, candle when it moves forward, it counts the, the last 20 candles and puts a line. 
So what it does is it always uses the last 20 candles to project the future average. So if you're here, if you're here, what the, the moving average does, it counts every candle, gets the average, and plots it there. Make sense? And then if you go here, it counts this candle and the other 20 or the 19 and plots its average. So you get the average of the last 20 candles. And this white line keeps doing it. And so this candle will get the last 20 candles and put the average. Does that make sense? So that's the moving average. And different moving averages have a different formula to calculate the average. And that's why it becomes important to use the average in trading. So the average in trading with candlesticks is the weekly. So it doesn't make sense. So if you're a big trader and you're a big company, you don't want to know the top and you don't want to know the bottom. Oh, you do, but you want to know where is the average? Where is the average resistance and where is the average support? So the weekly candle stick gives you that. And that's why we plot this line to find the average resistance and the average support on the macro level. Now we've established that with this approach. Now we can go to the daily. And, uh, and like, it, like uh, TradingView does, I have to go back a bit to where we were. Here we go. Now on the daily, each candle represents the daily chart. Um, daily price action. Before we're on the weekly, now we're on the daily. The daily candle shows you the price action in the course of that day. So if this candlestick, big one here, in that day, price dropped from, from there all the way down. So let's talk about that. So I'm going to talk about this particular candle. And what happens with that candle is the previous day price finished there. So the new candle opens price there. And the course of the day, price went all the way down. And then by the end of the day, price stopped there. So that tells you that candlestick has a big, has a lot of wick. And that tells you in the course of the day, there was a lot of buyers here. And the fact that the wick is bigger than the body is a bullish sign. And that's why we had a green candle the next day. Okay, and that's why we had pretty much a ranging sign, like candles were on the range. So what, what was trying to be figured out with the buyers is it was undecided. Is I'm gonna go up, I'm gonna go keep going down. It was undecided. So that one candle sets up the story for the coming days. Make sense? Now, if you look on the daily, if we move back one, let's look. Remember, we had this weekly, weekly line. What did we say on this weekly? This weekly support. Yeah, we've mapped it. That was the weekly support here. And you can tell by the weekly support because look at the daily candles. All those weeks tell you there's a lot of buying. There's buying pressure here, therefore price went up. So that's why we have the weekly support. The daily breakdown tells you that. The weeks will tell you on the daily why the weekly candle was bullish and that was support. Now, Price has dropped down to this level where previously there was support. Now you can see the weekly has become resistance to this area. So before it was support, now what was support now becomes resistance. Once the price once price falls below a support level, on the way up it becomes resistance, and that's why we are struggling to pass this area. Hopefully that makes sense. So whenever price drops a previous support, it is more likely that it will find it as resistance. 
<coughs> Similarly, what was resistance becomes support. So if you, in the, in over here, what was resistance when price was coming up? It found there was resistance. It's a small resistance. Price went down. And when it went past it, on the way back down, it became support. And now we can see the weekly support, weekly resistance, and you can see how it was derived. Okay. So <coughs> we talked about the candlesticks, what they represent. When a candlestick such as this has a small body and a big wick, it's called a hammer. So you know what a hammer looks like. A hammer is pretty much with the not the best drawing, yeah, I understand. But that's, that's the hammer. And therefore, the body of the hammer versus the handle is pretty much what we call a hammer. That one's a hammer. And whenever you see a hammer, it's a bullish sign. But what you want to see after a hammer is another green, another green one that goes above it. And then you know the momentum's on the upside. So these combinations are all documented on the internet. You can, you can find them, um, but you want, you want to know is learn the combinations. Okay, wet dreams. <laughs> okay, oh, hopefully that makes sense for you. So in, in trading, let me make it clear to you, in trading and look, reading the charts, you need to know candlesticks, fundamentals. You need to understand support and resistance, and you need to understand trend. When you understand those three elements, you understand how to trade, really. It's a combination of those, how you put it together. Those three elements are very important to knowing how to enter and leave a trade. And what I'm trying to do is tell you the candlesticks are very important. And here's an example for you. This daily chart shows you these wicks here, doesn't it? Look at those three wicks on the daily. So if you've got three days of buying from that level, well, it's going to go up because it's telling you that there's, there's buyers here. Now, if we go back, if we go to where we were today, our price action, there's no surprise. Look at this. Just, just you don't need to know all the other stuff, really. This, this is a real easy one. Three days of weeks. That's why he went up. There's a wick here, there's a wick there, and there's a wick there. Well, three days is enough. Here, here we go. Wicks, three days of wicks, and the next candle's up. And if there's no wicks, it's even better. If there's no wicks, this one's got jack all wick, it's up. So the daily chart will tell you a lot when to enter a trade. Just look at the wick, the daily chart, and look for the wicks. There you go. Two wicks, green candle. This one was a bit nasty. They still want to push it. And again, another wick, and the price just went up. Wicks, price is going to go up. It doesn't tell you how high it's going to go. It's just going to tell you it's going to go up. Three, look for three daily wicks, and that's a, a good sign. Price is going to go up. So the daily chart gives you, daily candlesticks tell you a fair bit about entry or the momentum. And similarly, it's opposite on the other direction. So if we go to a bearish scenario where we had the daily chart with wicks up above, here we go, here's one. We've got three days of top wicks. Price pushes it down. Here there was a lot of wicks on the bottom, but these wicks on top were much bigger. So the pressure is downwards. Plus, you got to have context. Yeah, you got to have context. You also need to know your support and resistance. So here, what was it? Support. Support. And here becomes resistance. Yeah. So these these were support, support, and and when we break down below it, it becomes resistance. So when this came down. He found a bit of resistance, went back up. But historically, you moved that across. Now you see why there's a lot of resistance because of this history there. 
that's one reason but there's more but that's that gives you a picture of previous price action is used to forecast a QE's in the long run here is two weeks on the top two weeks on the top price comes down two weeks on the top price comes down a few weeks out here price comes down so the weeks tell you it was a a big macro triangle that's why price went down <coughs> structure tells you as well so but now here's the thing in this area where's a trend there is no trend so you need to go with the trend to give you an idea on where price is likely to come if there's on the way up like this there's an obviously clear trend therefore you go with the trend wicks on the bottom wicks on the top don't know well go with the trend it's up you don't if you see the structure sideways and you don't know where it's going to go it's a small structure wicks on the bottom some wicks on the top still go with the trend up this is a big this is a complex one this is a distribution so it takes a while to figure out at the time you can't figure it out so structure is another aspect to trading but we won't cover that today so what's, what we're going to stick to is candlesticks support and we've included moving averages all right now let me look, read what what dreams are saying the long week indicate also that people did sell before others did buy why is the only what is it only a bullish indication okay big weeks on top bearish weeks on wrong bullish. yes that's pretty much it now everything is about context okay you cannot just look at weeks out of context you need to include weeks or candlesticks in context and i don't want to jump forward with all that 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 We'll, what we're going to do is build the layers of understanding. So the next session, we'll talk about Fibonacci levels and moving averages and how they come into the picture. So all these elements that I said here, candlesticks, support and resistance, trends, moving averages, Fibonacci levels, and the last one is indicators. When you know how to put them all together, you get a strategy. Make sense? So in, in general terms, what you want is two, minimum of two of those elements agreeing as confluence for a trade. Three is better. What do I mean by elements? Moving average is one element. Support and resistance is another element. Candlesticks is the third element. You've got three elements agreeing then that's a good trade or good understanding of the likely scenario to play out what you think it is. So here we have, now here we go. An example, price comes down to the 20 moving average. Now we have the 20 moving average is one element. We have a wick or candlestick that's green. That's the second element. The third element, previous resistance, is now support. That's the fourth, the third element. That gives you a good reason to jump in on the daily. We have three elements that agree. Yeah, let me repeat it again. We have three elements that agree that this is a good probability for an, a, a good setup to go up. We have previous resistance. You can see here that was clearly a resistance level. A resistance level needs the minimum of three touches. One touch, two touch, three touch. That is now confirmed resistance. Make sense? Three touches is the minimum. Sometimes there is two and they're difficult. What we want is three touches, two, confirm its resistance here we go now now resistance is flat levels and 
resistance is sloping levels or trends, what we call the trends. So let's look at this trend. How many touches? We have one touch, two touch, three touch. That's clearly a resistance. The fourth touch is usually the breakthrough. Fourth touch, breakthrough. So the side that gets the more touches is the side that's going to give up. Okay? So I'll, I'll continue this here. Uh, let's see another example. Uh, anyway, let me continue on. When I find I'll explain it more. Here's another scenario. Here's another trend line. Okay, and I'll get rid of these. Just, this is gonna just too many circles is not good. <laughs> Here we go. First touch, and you're not gonna know what that means. You just got that's one first reference point, and you just make a note of it. Ideally, this is a second one, so we can potentially pull this down a bit. Hold on. And, and the thing is, sometimes it's not perfect, yeah? So you've got, to, you've got to be flexible to read the chart. Sometimes you might just have to ignore some of these little buggers and just adjust it. So in, here, in this case, this was a line. Yeah, so now we have detail. You can see that. This trend was a resistance trend line. Yes. Third touch here. Fourth touch. There's a breakthrough. And similarly here. So you can see it's very, very similar, isn't it? And the fourth touch, a breakthrough. In this case, this is a triangle formation. In this case, <clears throat> a different type of triangle. But what it, what what's in common with these buggers is the apex. Come on, on, yeah. Okay. So the apex is where price comes down to for decision. It's a big move, up or down. That's what's going to happen. Similarly here, up or down. So in when you learn when when you get to uh, experience a lot of charts sometimes this is what happens and a lot of times actually you have this price action and it pops out and then dips this is a fake out so what they tend to do the whales is they they know when it breaks that that everyone jumps in and they know and they what they do is they wreck them they push it down so they know this scenario and they let it happen and the whales just jump in and they dump it and they liquidate all the shorts here and all those people that came in will have short short stop losses around there and what they do is they liquidate all their stop losses and once they're all liquidated they go back up and so what they've done here is exactly that they push it down so your your stop loss will be there and under this wick and they make sure they collect all those stop losses, liquidate them all, push the price down. But when that happens, there's all these other ones that are already on the 20 moving average to buy it back up and price goes back up. So you get wrecked. Basically you get wrecked there. And uh, that's what they wanted. So there is also caution. You've got to be cautious where you put your trades in and where you, um, but it doesn't always work, yes? No matter how much you plan, they, they can still do what they want to do. But on average, you've got, to be, you've got to be diligent and you've got to be very... You've got to think ahead of what possibly can happen. And it's not easy. No matter, and you, no matter how many times you do it, you're still going to get burnt. Okay? Um, it's, it's just... And, but so on the average, the question is on average, how many times are you successful? Yeah. How many times I did it? They just did once. On the way here, you made a lot of money, but once in a while they'll, they'll do this. So back to 
back to the candlesticks levels. So what we talk about resistance, resistance can be a slope, a trend. And the support can be also the same, a slope, a trend. Support is that first one, support, support. Now, remember I said you can also have, and what we consider support and resistance is um, flat. You can also find that in there if you really look carefully. <coughs> On average, you can say that is a support. Even though the, the wicks have come down, you can, you can say on average, that is support. Those wicks, you've got to ignore. This is the true support on, on the horizontal level. So it's never going to be perfect. And you just got to have this mindset where you've got to look at the average. So that is, on average, is support. Even though if we wicks down there, the dip, this is what we call the dip. By the dip, by the dip. But this is your real support level. Just push it down a bit. Actually, I'll push it down. Right, that is the right there. If I average it out, that is a real support level because I use this as previous resistance, average support, average support, pre resistance, resistance, and then support. So this line becomes important. So when when price breaks below it, you pretty much lost support, and that's why it drops heaps. Because on average, this was the, the, the line in the sand. And what happens when it does break support, if we come in, come in close, look at this. When price breaks support, just like this one here, when it breaks support, it goes to retest it. And it gets rejected, and then only then will it dump. So here on three days, it tried to break that previous support, support level. Now it's resistance. After three days, it gave up, and price dropped heaps, a lot. And that's what happens on general terms. Whenever a, a, a support level is broken, there's always a, a return to that support for a rejection. That's where you do your shorts. <clears throat> and there's a, a setup for shorts. You got to look at. You got to count the touches. That's another trading strategy, and um, but you need to understand that. So when price breaks support line, it's usually retested, confirmed to resist. Um, so just how I said, you need three touches to confirm resistance. You also need a few touches to confirm its support. Okay. So here we had one, two, three touches of support, didn't we? Here, that's one, two, three touches, and we got support. That's why price went up. But the whales did whatever they wanted to do, so they pushed it down below support. And now, because we confirmed this is a support, when we broke it, it's going to be hard for you to get back up. It's going to be likely resistance. That's why it's a perfect spot to short. So if I take that scenario and apply it to today, you're going to understand why certain things happen. So let's let's just let me just fix this up. I don't want to take too long. So now here, let's get in close, 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 close. So what I I talked about levels of support and resistance. Come on, let's get rid of that. So now we're going to apply it to today. What did I say? Three touches here. Yeah? Yes. I keep saying yeah. Ballpark figure. One touch. First two. My first touch. Second touch. Third touch. Fourth touch. What happens? Breaks through. Remember, I said the fourth touch is usually the one that breaks through. Here, it's not always straightforward. In this case, we also have a formation that tells you it's a bearish formation once it's broken. So ascending wedge is a <coughs> is an important level, I mean, important structure. So now let's look at this. And in the same terms, 
on the data, it doesn't show you the retest, does it? So you need to go into small time frames. So let's go to the four hour. Now, what I'll do is clear this up a bit because the data doesn't really do a good job to explain here. Now, with our chart here, we have clear resistance there, right? You can see, no, it's not hard to understand. Resistance, resistance, third touch resistance. When price breaks on the fourth, it becomes support. That's why you should jump in there because we, we broke it after the fourth touch. Therefore, it becomes support. That's why price went up. Again, this is a fake out as far as I'm concerned. And similar to last time, the wires push it down. This is a fract this is called a fractal. Okay, so the price pushes it down. So we, we know our resistance level, the fourth touch, is the it's called a breakout strategy. You look, you count for four. So this is on the four hour, you can do this on the five minute, it still works. You can find five minute trades anywhere. And you look for the fourth break level break and you trade it. It's all about the, the setup and then the rules apply. This is a checklist. Four four touches. The fourth touch, you, you break through, you buy. And understand there's a retest. Sometimes there is no retest. So if we have a scenario where this is a flat line or a slope, you get the first rejection, you get a second rejection, and you get the third rejection. Sometimes it's, it's, you can see the, it's the triangle. You get these lower highs and the breakout is, is flat. On the fourth one, and in, in many cases, it will retest and then go up. But sometimes it just doesn't do it, it's just bullish, it just goes. And there's no retest. <coughs> so when usually this is a strategy I'm telling you now, when it breaks, sometimes it's smart not to chase it. Sometimes you place your orders here. Yeah, you place your orders here because you know it's going to come back down. But the thing is, it happens so quick, depending on the time frame, it happens so quick. If it's in the, the five minutes or the 10 minute chart, it's gone. And sometimes it gives you a chance like this many times. So that is a strategy. And what you do is, if that's the, the previous low, you put your stop loss there. Because there could be a likely chance that this comes down and clears the stops. And if the wilds want to do it, they'll stuff you up anyway. It's just a fact. But in general, you put your stop losses just underneath the previous level and price will, well, when it goes down, there's some wicks and you want to be out of that range of the wicks. And then, and then when it turns up, you're still in the trade and it keeps going up. So that's called a breakout trade. And yep, I'll teach that as well. This is a strategy. And then, and you can see here, so we've got a first touch, we have a low. We've got a second touch, we've got a higher low. The third touch, we actually went lower. Now, here, once it breaks it, you will put your stop loss here underneath these buggers in case there's some wicks that come through. So you want to be out of their range and their price goes up. Make sense? Now, this one, so we're talking about, um, let's go back one. Let's, let's see, just clear this chart. Okay, so here we go on this structure. If I was to do my line, you can see where we broke it, right? <clears throat> so this was our support, and I'll just put it back where it was. And this was our other support. So we've got two support levels. So this one was our this one was our support on the flat line. This is a bit more complex, obviously. But it's still the principle still apply. That's our first one. That's one support level that we have when price break above it. This is the other one. Yeah. That's our other support. 
Now, which one is a real support? They both were. And so what happened when price, you can see it right now. When we lost both of them, what happened? A dump. That's why it dumped so hard. Because we lost both levels. We lost this level and we lost this level. And therefore, that was, for a lot of people, out. Get out. And that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it now? The shorts are the same, yes. Yes, yes. I, um, shorts are the same. But the, the problem with shorts is it doesn't get... You, you, you understand, there's... To, to put the shorts in your favor, you need to have three touches. All right, so let's just, we, so I've, I've, we've touched this, right? So this is an exit level because it was a support. This was our support and we lost both. It was a dump. Can you see the retest? No, there's no retest. So that's bearish, isn't it? These buggers didn't go back and re retest. So generally, you will see a retest, but because we, we're way above, I suppose this is all time high, and when and this dump yeah, gave the market no confidence in jumping back in, and therefore people aren't prepared to buy in. They know that that was a big dump, so the retest didn't come. In other scenarios, it would, would have come, but because of this, this such, such a deep pullback, such a dump, it took the wind out of it, so there's no trend. There's no real cover. You generally, if it was somewhere else in the bot, you know, not the top, this will or top of you know all time high. This would have come back up here, and and that would have been a confirmed rejection, and that would have been your short. This is where you would would have set up your short, and pop, and I was waiting. To tell the truth, I was waiting there to do a short. Didn't give it to me, and so what you saw is this bear flag. But the short was here. All right, so let's look at the short here. I'll come back to the short about the touches. <coughs> Only certain scenarios work. So if I look at this in detail, very similar. You can see the line. The first one establishes the second touch and the third touch. What happens, so we've got the same one up here. One touch, two touch, three touch. When price break down, that's that says now time to short. So here we go, it comes up. It doesn't quite touch it, it does touch it. Doesn't it? It does really touch it. If I take the wick of this one here, you can see how many touches there. There's three touches and then a drop. Now the short, the shorting. You have to get the right time frame. So here I've got the four hour. Doesn't it does do a good job because this candlestick told you to <coughs> it's a touching, but also the candlestick combination. This candlestick with this one here almost did the job. It's not clear signal, but that candlestick basically is indecisiveness. It's not up or down, it's in the middle. It's a candlestick like that. And that candlestick will, if it was more weak on the top, that's bearish. But because it was roughly about the same size, it was hard to figure out to a clear sign. But in, in the context of everything, big dump here, this looks like a bear flag. And I'll talk about what bear, a bear flag looks like. Therefore, this in the size of it was a, a good opportunity to short. So, it's not always the touches, it's also the candlesticks. Candlesticks, as I said, are very important. So you need to understand the candlestick method. Method. Now, if I was to clear this up a bit and go to the one hour, now you can see the touch is a bit more clearer, can't you? So we have not always clear touches, but we have the first, the second, the third, and then dump. This candlestick here was the exit that one was basically saying time to short so if you use that candlestick as a short sign that's in the hourly and if you go to 30 minutes it will be even clearer that will win the that candlestick gave you the, the reason to short and this was support at the time 
the fact that this candle engulfed all these buggers tells you that's a bearish sign short so that would be my short there after that candle and and you can see how when it when this little area lost its support it came to retest it with one more candle and then went down so when you look at it the finer details it's it's all there and it's it's all about watching the details everything tells you a story you need to know support and resistance in a big way you need to understand candles what's well, a bearish candle in context with the structure and now i haven't even put the other elements in there there's more but the fact that this this is simplicity and it's easy okay uh, let's see So we have a structure there that tells you that's going to either go up or down. <clears throat> and I did cover this, I think, um, before. The structure also tells you the, the target. So in this case, our structure from this level and our real level, and this structure's level is that too, right? From, on, from a, a horizontal level. This is our structure height. From that height, to that level that's one height of the structure here and what you tend to do is you grab that and you apply it to the breakout level and that's usually the target <coughs> but in our case we've got two levels this week is the other level true so we get this structure and you measure it that's the other level and you apply it to here, the breakout level. And then you can see why we came down that far. Okay. Here's on the third, the flagpole. That's the flagpole. So I did say last time that a bull flag looks like that. A flagpole, a flag, and price usually goes up. That's a, a bull flag. A bear flag is the opposite. Pole, that's a pole, that's a flag, and usually goes there. This height is usually applied to this height for the target. And also, in many cases, this height is applied to the breakout level, and it's also the target. So in this case, our pole was, our, was meant to be one of our potential targets and it didn't work so it was just the height of this structure and therefore that's why i had about 40 45k at one stage i thought this moving average would be the one so it didn't play out it was just based on this this lo localized structure but it's not to say that this can't go down and now you can see this level you can see this level whoops so let's clear this all up because there's a lot of Drawing. Where's the rest? How are we going? Now, if we click, so we that was a so in context, this was our structure, and really, the structure was that there. We didn't get the third touch; it just dropped, right? Now, where's our support and resistance in this level? When you look at the one hour, it's very hard, isn't it? So let's look at the four hour. Four hours is a good good time frame to work out things. So in my my method, I never I don't usually use the first one. I usually use the second four hour scenario, and that's usually my line in the sand. And you can see if I move this down a bit, including the wicks, that is a good level of support along here that was a support level price came broke that support level but this slope was as a resistance now price has come down has done a double bottom yeah so we have like a w shape whenever you see that kind of formation that's bullish the other one is this 
That's also bullish. That's a reversal pattern. Double bottom is usually a reversal pattern. And what you tend to do is you, you trade that breakout because this could keep going down, right? So you look for confirmation when you have a resistance level, when it breaks that, that's your entry. Similarly, this is the same because this could go back again and down. When it breaks, it breaks that level of resistance, you trade. So what we have here now, <clears throat> this scenario is here. We haven't broken it. This is my support level. Now it's become resistance. So in context today, we are hitting a major resistance level and therefore we have a bit of a pullback or pause. Okay, so <clears throat> right now we can understand why there's resistance. It's it's not hard. So we know that's why you need to understand candlesticks, support and resistance. This is very clear why it's resistance. I can't tell you if it's going to break it or not. If you haven't bought here and you're looking to buy, I wouldn't buy now. I would look for once it breaks through and here's a scenario. What, how do you enter the trade when it, if it breaks through? Well, let's look at a small time frame. So this is the four hour. Let's pick the one hour. Okay, so that's our first touch. Yeah, first touch. This potentially could be a method where it goes down, find support. So this is our previous resistance, it could find support here. And it, second touch. Third touch. And, set, and generally, this is the thing, the third touch, but we would like that to happen, but the fourth touch is the one that we it will break through. Okay? But it doesn't always work that way. Sometimes, if it's really bullish, it goes here or goes there. So, you got to play odds. The more the touches, now here's the thing, the more it touches, more in your favor as a trade. So the more touches you have on this breakout trade, the more you're in likely to make a good trade. It's because you have what it is, it's eating away at that resistance line and you've got a history. Remember I said to you, two touches is not enough to confirm resistance. Three touches is. The fourth touch is usually the breakout. But having said that, what will happen while this is breaking away and our indicator, just so we have an indicator and I'll show you, is going downwards. And we and the price is trying to break that. That's not a good sign. Basically, what it's saying is if the indicator momentum indicator is showing that it's going down while this is happening, the fourth touch would likely probably go down like that. The indicator shows you where momentum is going. So if we look at the R indicator at the moment, uh, let's put the MACD. I can hide this. At the moment, our MACD, which is the momentum indicator, right there on the 30 minutes, has a crossover right there. And that's telling us ex price is exactly matching. Sorry, the indicator is exactly matching the price. That's okay. So there, there is no bearish divergence and there's no bullish divergence. And you need look it up what that means. I'm not going to explain it, but basically it means price. When there's bearish divergence, price doesn't match momentum, and when there's a bullish divergence, price again doesn't match momentum. So, in the bullish case, bullish divergence is where price is dropping, but the momentum is increasing, and that's a good, very good sign for an entry. So that's another element to your list. If there's bullish divergence in your favour along with the others, it's your advantage to jump in. So in this kind of setup, <clears throat> we've got the first touch. The second touch has to be clearly put away from the previous, just like here. 
Okay, so if we look at this scenario, I suppose this is as good as the other. If we look at this scenario, let's clean that up a bit. That's our line, right? And you can see the first touch and MAC these around here. A second touch, MAC these around here. Where's the third touch? MACD is flat as well. So it didn't give you much to go with. There is, it, it, it didn't show you there's a drop or an increase. But it did show you a crossover right there. If I was to increase this. How do I increase this? I'll have to make the side bigger. Come on. Oh, sorry. This is the one. If you look care carefully, there's a crossover right here. So that's telling you it's going to drop. There was a candle there that told you it's going to drop. The MACD crossed over, and that right there, and we'll pick that candle. That's a crossover there. And let's see which candle was. It was that third candle. And that makes sense. <clears throat> when you have a three candles, if you have two candles in a row, so you've got a green light and then you've got two red candles, that's a very setup. So the third one is pretty much clear. This is a lagging indicator, so <clears throat> it's really this one. After this candle goes finishes like that, it's going down. No, I did short, actually. <coughs> it was a live, live stream and I shorted. And my problem was I went to bed. And when I woke up, it was about here, so I didn't get to profit that much. So that was a good shorting opportunity because I actually thought that would go much deeper. But what it turned out to be, the height of this structure was a target. I'm going to remember this. Actually, this is the height, isn't it? That wasn't the height. That's the height of the structure. From that top, that's the height of the structure, and that was a target. Not quite there, but that was it. So it was a re nice reversal, double bottom, as you can see. The W formation, as I said, one, two, three, and up. Now this is just going to go. It's going to go up. Pretty confident on that. Question is, how far is it going to go back down? So I, th I think I've covered levels of support, resistance, based on and the strategy as well along the boot. Was I wasn't planning to do that. Um, <clears throat> so I gave you a free lesson there on a breakout strategy and buying. And now you could it's not it's not the complete checklist, but it's close enough. Okay, so the rest you can improvise. But, um, now going back to where we were, let's go back. Now you're going to see something here that was is relevant. Uh, let's get rid of. Uh, <clears throat> now let's see that weekly resistance level. We're not talking about the wick. We're talking about the weekly resistance level. So let's just clean this up a bit. Do you guys online, if you, have you heard of the golden ratio? If you don't know what the golden ratio is, look it up. Okay. Golden ratio is 0 0.618. And you can explain a lot of things with Fibonacci. So I'm going to just quietly touch. So I'm not going to go into detail. This is a Fibonacci tool. And I'm going to just stretch it for, so my bottom here is my reference point and i'm going to go all the way to the top okay and i'm just going to reverse this because it's the other way <clears throat> now look at this level all right i'm just going to move this across move this across and i'm going to keep moving it across 
move, 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 move. And we'll get to it, but here we is. Here we are. Now you can see Fibonacci. So we have historical price action, and we're going to see how Fibonacci affects future price action. This is the weekly resistance. I'll move this across. Now you can see the weekly came into place. Not the daily, we're using the weekly. Now you can see when we hit the weekly, see that week there on the weekly? That week was a good selling. That was a clear sign to sell. There you go. Right there was a good sell. Pulled all the way back down to the previous Fibonacci level. And that's your buy. Back up. So this weekly resistance in the past affected the future, didn't it? Weekly resistance affected this bull run. And there was a good good trade to be made here yeah, on the smaller time frames. Gain box and square. Yeah. <clears throat> whatever boxes you touch, whatever tools you touch, just be good at it. That's my advice. Indicators, doesn't matter what indicator you pick, just be good at it. There's all these different tools, but you just got to be good at it, understand how to use it in terms of understanding its context with price. So you can see how weekly, if we plot this weekly resistance or this weekly chart, you can see now this is a weekly, we said, support. Did it really come into the story? Not really. The Fibonacci did more so, didn't it? Did this come into the picture? Yes, it did. In some ways it did. Not perfect, but it did. And it became the 0.5 Fib level. You can see it is. When price came here, and if you, no, I didn't know at the time. This is a bear market all the way down. When price went back up, why why was this such a resistance? It was the golden ratio 0.618? That's why we had this. So, in trading terms, the 618 is always strong support or strong resistance, isn't it? So you'll know this. So understand if you need to learn your Fibonacci's and practice them. And you can just pick them anywhere and just and you you'll work it out i'm not going to there's a the, this sequence of um like i said in my uh, description for this one there, this will be a tutorial of number of sessions so this is primarily we're covering um support and resistance but my point is fibonacci is another support and resistance tool so what, what i did is i showed you from the candlesticks the body of the candle and uh, it can be support and can be resistance. I also talked about, Fib I'm talking about Fibonacci telling you that it's support and resistance. It doesn't have to be candlesticks. But when you have candlesticks and Fibonacci, two elements, telling you it's resistance, now you've got a business case. You've got two elements agreeing that that's resistance or support. So that... <laughs> I can't emphasize how important that is for you in the future trading. Future trading, that strategy is very important. Candlesticks, support and resistance, and Fibonacci, support and resistance, is very important for future trading. The third one is moving averages, as I said. So moving averages can act like support and resistance. So this session was about support and resistance. I'm giving you free tools. Is it free? Candlesticks, Fibonacci, moving averages. Yes, that's free. <laughs> Sometimes I just work along. So here you can see clearly on the daily, on the weekly, moving average became resistance. Hold on. Let's get that color different so you can see what I'm doing. Here. Moving average is support and resistance. It's also the, the Fibonacci level. They're both two elements, they're saying resistance and becomes resistance, doesn't it? Here, there's, uh, there's let's, let's pick another one. Here, 
moving average roughly here, yeah, moving average is support. It, it works. Here will be probably another different moving average. Um, let's see another moving average, moving average support, moving average support. Not here. That will be the ten weekly, and so roughly that case in the sizes, but it's roughly resistance along with the fib level. <coughs> here is purely Fibonacci being resistance. There was no other reason. Actually, there is. This level was support. You can see all those wicks over here becomes resistance. So this level is resistance. So if we get a line, so this is a weekly. If we get the weekly there, so if we move in close, you can see that, right? Right here, our weekly candlesticks, that what was supposed to be, so what I'll do is I'll make that yellow. That is right there. You say it's not 100% perfect because you've got a few candlesticks so you've got to average it out. You can say that's roughly average. Resistance, support, and yeah, a bit of a wick, but still support, support. So when you move it across, perfect resistance. That, and the second one is resistance. Now that's based on this level. But the fact that it also, in conjunction, it was the golden ratio over here. So it was a very strong resistance level. Purely from this, and the golden ratio made it really heavy resistance. So that's why there was a big sell off and, and it couldn't be broken. Okay. Now that's because now we have two elements that agree and it, it, it's fact. So that explains, it explains why this happened. So support and resistance, you need uh, in most cases. It's the, either the daily candlesticks or the weekly candlesticks that give you those levels. And if they're in confluence with Fibonacci or moving averages, you've got a business case to enter or short or go along. And that's that's a fact. Now, Fibonacci is in context. You can, Fibonacci is that uh, how, is how you apply it. And so it's a skill in, its, in itself. <clears throat> in here, I did the macro. And, and you can see how this weekly support or resistance over here, that weekly resistance, an all-time high, played its role here. And similarly, this, this level here played its role there, okay? And if we look at moving forward, whoops, let's get rid of that. You can see, now watch this. It's it, it's surprising that the 1.618, so we got the golden ratio, 0 0.618, 1.618, it became support. No other reason. But the, the FIB level became very a strong support level. That that's where I was very confident that this was going to continue up. So I actually told it. In my uh, post at the time, I said this is the buy zone, and I, I knew it was because of this. So it, it's just, and then now if we move it up, now look, watch this. Oh, sorry, and you can't see it, but that's two point six one eight. We freaking have another golden ratio, and now it's resistance. That's why we're stuffed. <laughs> That's why we, we got the pullback. Um, can I, if I clear that? No, can't do that, okay. So, well, let's see. Um, I'll just hide it from the weekly. So you can see how you can, you can hide lines from different time frames. So if I do this, I can hide these. From the weekly, but that you can see them on the daily if you're not familiar with trading view. I'll hide it from the weekly. 
Agora como eu vou incluir. Now, that's the golden ratio. And it's purely for that reason we have another strong resistance. And now you can see, so that's the, what is it? That's a 3.618. And we, we've sort of missed out on the 2.618 as support. Have we? Is it? Let's see. Let's clearly. It was close enough, we can say. But it might still come down. And so I, I haven't, you know, my, my level here is, that's a 42K, 45K. And so in context, this, see, we, we on the weekly, see this weekly support level based on the body of the candle is confluent with the 2.618 Fib level. It's a strong case to buy. So if price wants to drop down here, you should buy. Now look at the third one, the 10, 20 moving average. It's, it's in the same area. So guys, if you've got money, you better buy. This is a buying area, hot spot. So if this was to go, and it's my belief that we got the A, B, C, we're going to hit this level. That's my thinking. And yeah, you potentially might not come because it's pretty predictable for some, some people. The 45K range. So this is what the whales do. What the majority expect is not what they give. They're smart asses. Basically, <coughs> just say there is, and this is experience, just say you've got a level that has two elements or three elements agreeing that that's a good buy zone. What the whales will do is price comes and they'll stop it from coming there and push it up because there's all these buyers waiting. So they won't let it come, smart houses, or they do the opposite, they push it down. And in, so in many cases, you miss out. Even though it makes sense, they stop it, just short of it. Or they push it down and they, and they liquidate these people as well. Because if it's a clear case where this is going to be a good support case to buy in, what are you going to do? You're going to leverage high. You're going to make a good trade. I'm, I'm waiting at the 45K, 43 to 45K to leverage big and continue on. And I'm still patient. It might come back down like this. <clears throat> but as I said, it's likely that price won't go below that. And and I said that could be a double bottom if it, if it turns out that way. <coughs> But for the time being, we'll see what happens. But um, yeah, I have a strong business case to enter here. But now, the fact that the new results have shown that this is also a strong support level, and and it could be because of what I just said. I don't want it to come down that low. Uh, but in the, in the past, it's it's worked, but it wasn't a clear sign. Here, if you look on the current weekly, right. Let's get rid of this vertical line. There is a wick. Okay, there's one wick. On the wick. So we had one wick here and then up. So <clears throat> it did not come back down for this one. Here we had many wicks on the weekly. So we might have this potential possibility where we have a, a few week, a few weeks of uh, two or three weeks. And but it, it doesn't look like we're going to get that. So, but we'll see. Um, and that's why we need to look at it from different context. And if we look on the daily, <coughs> um, it, might, it might be able to come down. So if I've touched on this before, it's sort of getting sidetracked a bit. This Elliott Wave ABC correction. So when there is a, what we call is a, a, a impulse correction. Okay, so let me just fix that color. Yeah, that's a, called ABC correction. Whenever you have a trend, and it's called the Elliott Wave trend, if you want to be more specific, the Elliott Wave trend goes one, two, three, four, five. All right, and let's, let's make it clear. So five impulses. 
Slide list to again. One, two, three, four, five. That's an example. <clears throat> and then you have the ABC, which is a correction wave. Okay? So you have five, and then you have one, two, three. And, and there's two types. One could be a double bottom like that. And the other one, as I showed you. Now, this is the scenario. Which one is going to play out here? Are we going to have the A, B, C, slightly lower? Or are we going to have the one that's flat? Does that make sense? And then based on that, there could be a formation. So there is, besides the correction wave, there could be a formation that gives you a clue. It could be a wedge. It could be inverse head and shoulders. Don't know. But that's what I'm looking at as well as a correction wave. So it's so all went aside. But again, back to support and resistance. This moving average has never been tested. And, and I'm thinking maybe this is the time, but so far, it's, the moving average has only been tested once down here. Historically, the moving average of 20, as I've shown you before, was always tested in the bull run over here. It's been tested many times in the previous, and the fact that we don't touch it at all is very surprising in this run. So you can see that previous bull run, and I'll pick the yellow color. That's a 20 moving average. 20 moving average, 20 moving average, a big correction. And this is a 10 moving moving average. And we, we, didn't, we didn't get it yet. So I was thinking that it's possible this, this time around it could be the one. Don't know. But as I said to you, here's the other reason why. So um, go back to weekly. And I probably should make it white because you guys can't probably see it. If I make this white, you can probably see a bit more. I can't change this, the, the, the label size. It doesn't work. So we've got the 3.618 as resistance. Makes sense. Golden ratio. And I was hoping the 2.618 is the support. And it was the support here, maybe not there. That's probably why we're not going to do it. If we'll support here as a golden ratio, then why would we do it here? And that's probably the reason. But this resistance is pretty clear. Um, so in, in essence, if I put, that's a 3.618, I'm going to put 4.618 as the next possible rejection level, which is about 78K. So if we were to go bullish, this level, next golden ratio, is going to be another resistance level or support. It's going to be play one of them. So there's a lot to cut. We're going to go pretty high, in my opinion. And if I also apply that golden ratio previously, watch this. Um, and, and you can apply it to any chart, really. Uh, I don't want to, I'll pick this one for now. Let's clear this up. The golden ratio appears a lot on many targets. So if I was to get uh, my Fibonacci level, was it, uh, yes, it was the extension one. I think it is. If I go from there, to the top, to the bottom. And I, I, I don't know if you can see it. And I'll apply the white color. Again, you can see 3.618, 2.618. It never got to the high level. So again, the golden ratio even plays its role here, 2.618 and so on. And uh, if I was to pick another chart, I don't know, say a link. 
which one was parabolic? Uh, that, that's right, that was parabolic, wasn't it? And I use the, I don't know if you can see that, if it's too much. 30K next 20 days, maybe. Yeah. Can't see why not. <clears throat> I don't try to get into the days. <laughs> that's, that's, that's hard. So if I was to use this on the daily, give us a look. One, come on, come on. That's my uh, link chart. And what I'll do is I'll save it and then I'll delete all that writing there. Okay. Now we're going to look at Fibonacci playing its role. This dump here, by the way, is the COVID uh, black swan event. So you've got to ignore that. Now, if I was to, and it makes it hard because you've got to have a reference point, right? So let me see if, I, if it works with this reference point, even that's a black swan event. Let me just, because previously it was white, now I better make it black. Let's see if it works here. The problem is the black swan event, I don't know how, don't know how it works. So this is my uh, 618 multiple. Okay, so I'll customize this one. And you can see each one, each blue line here is a 618 golden ratio. And when you look closer, you can see for that, the 11.618 became a strong resistance. And along the way, it even became support. Three, you know, three point six one eight became support or resistance here. So if I if I tweak it a bit, I can make it per fit perfect. But the fact that um, you know, this golden swan thing is that wick is not you can't get it perfect, right? So let me try to see if I can adjust it a bit. Maybe that's level, okay? That might be the level. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's it's very hard to tell, but. I tweaked it a bit. So that, that's found a few levels of the two uh, the 618 golden ratio as resistance and support. I'm not saying it's always the case, but it's a good theory. Uh, let's put that black. There you go. That's a 2.618. Here's a 3.618. That's a 4.618. 6.618. And... 12.618. So the, the golden ratio still comes into the play many times over. So that's that's my point with that one. And the final part is, even though this is a golden ratio called 3.618, and, um, and I've mentioned it before, the previous price right here, pre previous resistance there, and this is a doozy. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it. It's close enough. If I put that six, 61,800. Yeah. It fits perfect, doesn't it? Well, that's, that's, that's what's crazy about this one. 61,800 was our main resistance, which is a, a golden ratio. <laughs> I think that's the right, that's the main reason. 61,800 is a strong resistance. And that was, if I was to get rid of that, for the time being, you can see the wick was perfect there. First resistance at 61,800, plus or minus a few dollars. So the, it, it is the golden ratio as well. And that's why, for many reasons, that's a strong resistance, and that's why. Is it a top? I don't think so. But as I said, um, that's a good reason why we'll pull back, and uh, a few few rejections on the daily. Uh, you you decide. This is my observation. Give me another reason why we got resistance here. It makes sense, doesn't it? It's interesting. Yep.
So Fibonacci plays a support and resistance level, got moving averages a lot of the time does, and uh, candlesticks do it as well. Here we have the weekly candlesticks, as you can see, that was a weekly candlestick there, the body, and realistically this previous next one up played the more prevalent role so that you can look at these weeks, the body of these candles, and that was it. That on average, that 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 average level is fifty nine thousand eight hundred. But I would use that as the main resistance level on the macro level, not the golden ratio, although it is. If we break that fifty nine thousand eight hundred, then and and stay above it for four hours, we have a more likely chance to break that sixty one thousand eight hundred level. But we need to get above that. In the meantime, we have this weekly level here, very strong resistance because it was a lot of support. That level there to me is 55,700, right? That to me is the next strong resistance level. 55,700, 800 roughly. If we, will, uh, we will likely get a rejection there. I want the water market, all right. Okay, so using the weekly candlesticks, I've, I've derived my support and resistance level using my weekly candlesticks. Then I can fine tune it on the daily. Okay, it is there, but um, <laughs> I'm going to make it darker. So let me pick a different color. White, white might be a bit better. How's that for you? <clears throat> and now, now I'm looking on the daily and the weekly complements it, doesn't it? So this is my weekly candlestick, I mean weekly resistance or support. And if I was to increase that text so you can see a bit better, that is the level that we need to break. And in my opinion, uh, if we were to break this four hour candlestick level, now here's the last part to it. I'm going to apply my Fibonacci to it from the bottom, swing low to the swing high. It turns out to be my 618 level as well. So here we go. Let's put it back to yellow. Yep. You can see. Just as I said in my previous video post, the 0.5 to the 0.618 is our strong resistance level here. And it's my opinion that we're going to get a rejection. And we might do the double bottom, or so we might do the A, B, C with a double bottom and go up, or A, B, and a deeper pullback and hit my 21 moving average. I still believe it. If the scenario is that we break the 618, then it, you can disregard everything I've said so far about that this possible scenario. Uh, 4K resolution is too much for our um, <laughs> monitors. Yes, I know. So if I was to, I'll show you why. Now, because I'm using, I've got three monitors here. And I usually put the other stuff on the smaller monitors. So if I haven't had much feedback in people telling me which monitor to use, but if I was to accommodate what you're saying, just give me a sec. Let me ask the question here because people, it's, it's actually a good idea to get an opinion. So if I'm just going to temporarily change my screen, guys, so I'm going to black out for a while and I'm going to change screens. I'm going to pick this screen. Here's my other screen. Come on. My other screen. Is this a better screen for you guys? Whoops. Now you're seeing too much. <laughs> so is this a better screen for you guys to work with? Uh, 
Come on, what happened there? Just bear with me, guys. Did I lose you? Uh, just if you can hear me, just bear with me. I've stuffed it up somehow. Me too. I'm hanging with my browser. Just bear with me while my PC recovers, I think. That didn't go well. Refresh. Where are we? So I was moving it. Just bear with me, guys. I'm going to pick my monitor. Is this better? See how I use the other monitor? It's all black on the bottom. It doesn't quite do the job either, does it? Oh. Something went terribly wrong. I'm trying to refresh. Hold on, give me a sec. You there? Okay, you're still there. All right, I recovered, but something went really wacky there. I uh, don't really mind the 4K. Just so here's the other here's the other K, and this is my 32 screen. What is a 32 inch screen? And you can see it's, it's on a trading view. Um, I don't know how how you see it. But is that any better? I don't really mind the 4K, just can't read the trade for, yeah, I understand that. So um, this is the other 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 chart and it's a 32 inch screen. So it stretches it out and which is not, not really good in that sense. So I've got to squeeze in a bit. And if that, if you like that, is that easier to read? I don't know, you tell me. So um, that's that's pretty much it there. So if I continue on this one, <clears throat> you can see it pretty much, yeah. I think your, I think your base resolution for streaming is 4K, so it won't change, oh, okay. Yeah, you must be an IK, IT boy. Uh, give me a sec. Okay, um, so that's what I have in terms of support and resistance, and and so we we covered a fair bit, and I I'm aware of the time, so I'll leave it at that. Um, and so what I've done is pretty much to recap and summarize. We've covered candlesticks, we've covered support and resistance with using the body of the candle on the weekly and the daily, or or depending on the time frame, and resistance can be horizontal or or a trend line with three or four touches, and then we have the Fibonacci that can act as resistance and support, and we have, although we didn't cover it extensively, we can have moving average as support and resistance. So, and what, what so once you understand how to apply support and resistance, and I've given you a, one strategy, which is a breakout strategy. You ha you have those elements for a trade setup. There are other things in the uh, check checklist, um, and that and that indicators are part of that. So you need to know if you're confluent, uh, you got confluence with a price, or you got divergence with price. That's pretty pretty important as well. And um, so what I'll do is uh, probably a week from now I'll do another one, and we'll talk about. I've already covered the trend one somewhere else before um one of my videos and i think it's there if you look at it the streaming it touches it a bit what we'll do is we'll we'll, we'll focus on moving averages in the next one okay and uh i don't know when i'll do it but i'll, I'll try to give you a day head heads notice and uh and i think that's it i'll wrap it up wrap it up there i'll put it in context with today's price action and it probably explains certain things now more clearly why certain things happen 
and there's more to it. You also there's formations that we could probably cover as well in in the near future, and also. Um, but the thing, the main thing with all these elms is a, a trading strategy. If you can bring them all together, having two or three elements making a case, that's a good setup for either shorting or going long. Also, understanding. You need a strategy to enter a trade, and you can't do that trade without understanding the fundamentals, as I explained. If you're interested in doing any courses, let me know, or one-on-one -on -one training. Um, I am moving towards that with my website. It's going to be a fair bit of stuff like this, covering details with study cases. And if you're interested in subscribing, um, I'll leave my link, or contact me directly, and I'll, I'll get in touch with you, okay? So I'm wrapping it up. Have a nice day. All the best trading and uh, stay tuned for the next one. Cheers.